corruption of the vegetation within the preserve area that is subject to the conservation easement. They would have to get a modification of the permit. And who pays for that? The person that's asking for the modification. So if, if the village was to acquire the land at a dollar, and then all the legal needs that has to be done, the village would <coughs> take care of all the legal bills that were involved with that? Uh, that would be part of your agreement that you would negotiate yeah. before you enter yeah. into a deal. <laughs> And but that also wouldn't uh, change our status credit-wise because right. those, again, those were credits to offset the development of our community. And if they were to impact an area that is subject to the conservation easement, get the modification to the permit would require some off-site mitigation that they would be responsible. But the county would be responsible for that off-site mitigation, not Stony Brook residents, right. Stony Brook community. Okay. The, the well, county or the village, it would be... $43,000. Oh, I'm, I'm with you. These are just questions that need to be answered. Because right. if, if, again, this is, again, all theory, but if you do this parking lot, and, and that certainly changes the status of that agreement. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily our potential agreement, but the agreement how that land was supposed to be maintained. So, so we presume that in these casual discussions that we have, if there's a thumbs up and you want to move forward, we would turn it over to the attorneys and the attorneys would provide the language that would be protective of right. Stony Brook and of the preserve. Our intent as the community is not to pull one over I on two of our gated communities. Right. We're trying to do this in our best, mutual best interest. Right. I agree. I and think, in I fact, you are as well. if, if there are other um, other gated communities out there, any other taxpayer that are not in Ister, uh, in uh, Stony Brook or in the preserve, you know, they would, they may wonder why would we be spending sixty thousand dollars to help you folks? Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I think that's a valid question. Yes, Absolutely. it is. But you will have to answer. And mm -hmm. We will have to answer that. <laughs> uh, yeah. But that's the level of the perceived uh, risk that we have and what it means to the community long term. Okay, excuse me. Kathy had a question. I just want to clarify, I think what he was asking us. Again, somebody in the previous meeting said that if you start to build even just a parking lot, just anything in there, it loses its preservation status and becomes more open to further development. Is that true? I, I don't believe so. We would have to go through the permitting process to change anything. And once you open that door, it's not wide open in perpetuity. You're, it's open only for the purposes of that application. And if we were going to do something like that on your eastern border uh, or on Wildcat's western border, our approach is to be open and transparent. Everyone's going to know about it. So it's not like you're going to be surprised by paving machines coming in there and, you know, a road and a parking lot for you. You're going to know about it years in advance. Now there is one section of that preserve that um, the golf course uses as a bridge to get from one hole to another. Um, you'd, there would be an easement for any property that we want to keep. I can't say enough that the current rights and um, uh, other uh, elements of the agreement that you enjoy would remain in place. Okay. I just, just so you're aware of it, there is one section that, you know, that's part of the golf course. I mean, you can't get from one hole to the other without you going through that part of the preserve. So these are things that you need to be aware of that we're going to be looking at as well. As long as you can't run a, a four-lane road through it, we're, we're okay. Okay. Um, just see what else we have here. So until the preserve and or us say yay or nay for this, you're not involving... Um, Florida DEP or South Florida Water Management or okay one other question what is the time frame you're talking that they go out every five years and they redo re look at this for a 20 year what kind of time frame are we talking about I have no idea okay. we, um, we were frankly surprised that it still uh, is on some of the agendas w within both Collier and Lee County. Um, 
there has been money appropriated through the legislature for property acquisition. We're not sure where that will pop up. And mm -hmm. um, so it's the kind of thing where, again, the council that's been involved in it long before incorporation has viewed and continues to view this as a, a potential risk. So I, I wouldn't even speculate where it's at. Because when um, I was at the meeting with you, um, one of your things was that it wasn't even on the agenda till 2040. And that was one of the comments that, that was made at that meeting. So um, I'm not sure what the um, rush for this is other than it will save us money, they will save the HOA money. But again, um, if it's that far out, you know. We're, look yeah, we're looking at uh, this, so like I say, it's not uh, on the number one priorities on my list. Uh, uh, and not not because it's not important for you folks, but just mm -hmm. because it's, it's it's very speculative. Okay. Um, do any of the other board members have questions? Uh, no. <clears throat> from, what, from what I'm reading in the recent newspapers is that the state of Florida is uh, proposing to put a north-south card, or you know, from uh, Polk County, which is going to be terminus. Uh, at I-4, someplace between Tampa and Orlando, and go straight down into Collier County. Mm -hmm. you know, how would that affect uh, Collier County's thinking that why would we build a 951 if we got a straight shot up north without going through all these? You know? It's a good question. We are not sure what their motivation is. Uh, uh, frankly, uh, I don't know what the motivation for 951 is anyway. Uh, in my mind, rather than put in a costly four-lane highway, uh, the been here in a hurricane. <laughs> I think that's motivation. Well, that could be, uh, uh -huh. but the the better way to do things would be to add another lane or two onto I-75, right. cheaper uh -huh. and. Uh, but why that's not in the planning? It's because it's a different bu bucket of money with the state right. versus locals. Um, the the issue with the development of anything in the preserve is not just the road, but uh, that is the place where we get groundwater recharge. Right. And all of us, um, but, and it gets worse as you work west, we're getting saltwater intrusion and it's having a major impact on a lot of our uh, golf courses uh, because their draw is becoming more um, uh, salty as uh, each year, so we need areas like the preserve out there for groundwater recharge, and we're fearful that uh, easy access to that area uh, represents a potential for the county to sell off parts of it for development. Uh, Bonita Springs is in this has the same levels of concern, and in their recent uh, work um, with one of their uh, the mine property owners out, out east is to restrict access from the south going in there. So we're of a similar mind. Uh, but again, we're all dealing with, you know, speculation. Um, uh, and that's why, frankly, this is not the high urgent priority. Okay, but Lloyd, you had a question? Yeah, I still don't understand why the South Florida Water Management hasn't been involved in this yet. I mean, uh, they're a big part of that. Also, even the state, because a few years ago, we had the inspector out here, and he was going to fine us for not taking care of the basic plant. Well, they didn't know where the lot line was. But the state was really, really involved in that. You haven't talked to anybody yet. The other thing, uh, you talked about our parking lot. Is there any plans where the county would put a parking lot and they put the walkways and so forth in? Well, let me answer the last question first. There's no plan at all for anything back there at this time. You know, one of the meetings I was at, that was one of the purposes they wanted to buy that piece of land. Uh, that has not progressed to my knowledge, so Lloyd, it's not out there. In terms of uh, any other local or state agency, 
Um, all we're proposing to do is step into your shoes in terms of ownership of the property. So in terms of the permit, it wouldn't change other than making the village responsible for what you do now. Okay. John, you have a question? This water preserve. We give you the property and the water preserve is there. Okay? And you have Kaika Font, Kaika Missouri above on top, okay, and have a park now, whatever you do. What guarantee do we have that no one else will use our water preserve? It's not you can have wildcat all of a sudden start using our water preserve. We don't know who's gonna be using it. Right well, now we're the only ones using it. What do you mean using it? Well we use it for throwing our water there. We we I think we uh, water our fairways and stuff like that. Nothing changes. Because we changes. have wells back there. Yeah, we have wells back yeah. there, yeah. Yeah, nothing changes from your current. So no one else, no one else can access that water or use that no. water. Okay, that's fine. Okay. Um, if this were to proceed, you're going to hand it over to your attorney to say to protect your interests. Mm -hmm. And we, our attorneys, will work with your attorneys to make sure that we get controlling interest but you are not limited beyond anything that you have right now. Okay. So Dave is there Right. And you're paying so, for that. You're paying for Dan, right? You're paying for all the legal fees all for legal this fees. whole process. If we're give if we if we agree to turn this property over to you hmm. for a dollar, um I would expect that you would pick up any fees incurred with all of this. Well, you're going to have your own fees to review the legal document. I mean, it's not going to be, it's, it's nominal. Well, I, you know, and then it's still costing us money. I, and I'm saying, if the, the property was appraised for $680,000. So, if you would like to acquire this property for a dollar, I would suspect with the value of the land that you would pick up all costs. I mean, that would be something that we would put into there, but I don't think if we're giving you something that we should have to pay to give it to you. You're saying something we can, we can discuss, but just have that on your radar that I don't really feel that we should have to pay if we're giving you something. You're saving $40,000 a year for property. Okay, I, get, I understand that, but upfront costs, if this is something that you would like, that's something I would like to put into negotiations. Put that on your radar, that's something I just think we should put on the radar. We we'll probably have to discuss it as a board first. Right. Mm -hmm. So, just so that you know, I mean, for a dollar when it was appraised at $680,000? Um, yes. So, if I'm correct, the big takeaway here is that the village wants to acquire this property because they are concerned about Lee County coming in and doing the various things with it. Uh, and the village is in a better position to fight Lee County in that instance, correct? Correct. Can you cite the statutory authority where it says that the village's power to fight eminent domain or such similar proceedings is stated? I can't give you the site. Uh, we've been advised that by our village attorney. I would respectfully suggest that that's a critical point that needs to be researched. Mm -hmm. That was the statute. Okay. And it's the Florida DEP that does the permitting for this property? Uh, they're one of them. South Florida Water Management is another. And the Army uh, Corps of Engineers? Uh, I'm not sure if you have a core permit on this one. I don't think there's a core permit there. Okay. Kathy, can I just have your last name? Thank you. Um, you just earlier on you said that you don't know, want the pitch of land would be to put a parking lot in a board box. And then just a little bit ago you said we have no plan. And then you say, you know, we want to be open and transparent with you. But apparently you've been discussing this for a couple of years and this is the first we're hearing of it. So you know, you're speaking very well, and I understand the points you're making. I don't know that I believe yet that you're open and transparent and that we have all the information. So as, as you're considering the wide gamut of things that we could be doing at the village, before they actually get to prime time, you talk about a lot of different things. 
And when the property was acquired, the preserve back there the, by the county, um, it was viewed by many, uh, Councilmember Bosch is one, is that that would be a great opportunity to put walking trails and whatnot that would be an added amenity to the community. Uh, the fact that it's brought up in those comments is not a plan, it's a concept. And there's, I mean, we're presented daily with different concepts that might be of interest for the village. So that doesn't, uh, going from concept to reality is a very long, long planning process. And when you're dealing with concepts, we wouldn't start out with a fait accompli, here's the final package, you talk about what could be done. So that's, uh, I, could, I could name every functional area that we're responsible for as having numerous concepts out there that uh, frankly, uh, I'm better off not saying anything because then I, but but that's not totally transparent. Then. So to follow that though, at what point does it happen? Like, are you guys saying we want to buy this property for a dollar? Are you saying this is becoming an off-site place and we want to buy it for more? Like, what is that concept? We're at the point of talking with you informally uh, to, to determine whether uh, you are interested in selling this for a dollar, preserving your rights, uh, and uh, under, we, we would understand that we would take over your costs, you save the $40,000 a year, and you also have asked, your people have asked in the past, could there be a reverter clause in the event that there were, uh, there was an opportunity to sell it or um, somebody were to condemn its use? Uh, uh, and we've said yes, that's fine. So if you wanted to re-permit this for something else and go through all those, we would have the op Absolutely. we would have the uh, the yes. right to say no. Yes. There's no intent on re-permitting anything there. Today. Today. Mm -hmm. So in order to address your concerns, fine. Okay. Lloyd, you had a question? Just one point. Uh, you keep talking about saving this forty thousand. That's not quite right because you still have other preserve area to maintain, so would be something less than 40000 that we give up from that there. And I'm waiting for the fellow to tell me exactly how much we have to pay for that piece. Mm -hmm. But there's other areas we sure. have to take care of. Sure. Could it be possible to, if the land was given an imminent domain became imminent, um, <laughs> that the money that would be received from that imminent domain go back to Stony Brook? Because obviously, um, if you know, you guys weren't able to, or the village of Becerra wasn't able to hold off or stave off that development, which in theory, well, I think is why we had to give it to you in the first place. Could there be a clause that, okay, if imminent domain happens, then that money goes to back to Stony Brook? That was the reverter clause that was discussed and we understand, yes. Okay. Um, Rich, yeah. you had a question? Just to uh, clarify a point, there was someone made reference that why is this coming up all of a sudden? Many of us have been, have been here in Stony Brook for 16, 18, 20 years. This is not coming up all of a sudden. No, it this keeps rearing its ugly head. In early 2000s, about 9.51, and we were in real jeopardy of losing that preserve. We had then, Jim Bosch was single-handedly fighting that 9.51 and was successful. I don't know what in the future would happen in 951, but what I can sense here, if it were to come, it would revert back to the CDD, and the CDD would benefit of any financial success, and coupled with us saving money that the village is now willing to take over which would help all of our homeowners fees. So it's not a, a, a recent issue. Right. And I think this is an issue that we need to really give thought to. And on a second, second statement I want to make, 
Eileen, you made reference that you felt that 75% of our residents would not approve this. Mm -hmm. What are you basing that percentage on? Um, people that were here at the meeting the other day, people that have contacted me directly, just conversations. Maybe it's not quite that high, but it is is way more a majority. And, and okay. I think we need to understand, we would take our direction from the residents and possibly doing a survey on key. Well, and you know what? That. I, and if the residents decide it's not in our best interest, fine. Mm -hmm. I, I just suggest Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Absolutely. Um, one other question. Real quick, Bruce. Um, when I was at the meeting with you, you had made a comment that the forty thousand dollars that we would be saving for that, you would like to be put aside to do the landscaping on corkscrew. There's not a quid pro quo here, but uh, clearly, with <laughs> where have uh, I heard that before? With uh, the development of the new plans out front. Um, Invariably, I would guess that you're going to have some expenses out there. So this is one way um, that we could see some equity in this. Um, there's there'd be a benefit to the whole community to see the frontage there improved. Well, I think the HOA board will decide what to do with the money. Thank you, Rose. Does the village have any <clears throat> plans or concepts about? Building or developing some land in Estero that would require the need for conservation credits, which oh, you might be able to use this conservation property of ours for. Well, there's two parts to the question. Uh, the first answer is no, and the second part is I believe. Uh, and I defer to legal counsel here, but I believe that because that's already under a conservation easement, it has no value as a future credit for anything else. It's already encumbered. Okay. One, one last thing. Yes. Forgive me for being skeptical, but um, in, in all of my uh, career, I've never found a governmental agency um, portraying itself as altruistic as you are here today. <laughs> so please forgive my skepticism, but I can't help but wonder. So I understand the concern, um, and this is different. Um, and I don't know where, where, where you come from in terms of your relationship with government, but I don't operate in a I way. I worked for a defense contractor for 30 years. Okay. I've dealt with lots of government agencies, many of them environmental. Mm -hmm. so, so this, as the village, we are really um, trying really to, to establish that we're in a true partnership with our member communities uh, and our pu public. Um, we try to be very transparent. Um, as you've seen, I've talked about things that are little more than discussions in the hallway, nonetheless. Um, it's out there, and I don't want anyone to think that we're hiding the ball um, and something like this I'm I'm not going to get worked up or spend any more time on it if you folks don't think it's the right thing to do um, why should the village spend pay a forty thousand dollar a year bill or whatever it is Lloyd uh, for Stony Brook uh, if you don't think that's worth it then you can explain to your residents why your skepticism is, quote, costing, and quote, your your community forty grand a year. Okay. It's just well, that simple. I'd really like to get at the heart of who really has pref preferred standing in eminent I, I hear you. domain battle. I hear you. And we're going to have to review that further. <laughs> um, it, it, one thing that has come up, and it was mentioned here today, the village has broader interests than just Stony Brook. So rather than if you were to be approached uh, pragmatically, you may say, we'll sell it off rather than fight. The village would have deeper pockets and would be prepared to fight. And if you find any other motive out there, I hope that you're transparent and you let me know. <laughs> Absolutely. Are there, Kathy? At what, at what point would you be bringing this up in a um, zero village meeting? There's no timetable. Not until we agree that we want to do this and it's it's something that they would pursue for the yeah. Right. It's time and for I, the lawyers I, to get involved if we want to move forward. Yeah, yes. I'm not 
I'm not pre-committing the village council to this. They've, they're all aware that we're pursuing this. They a bit, but in the ultimate um, d decision, they reserve that right to say yes or no. Both boards are going to have to vote on it. Yeah. You know, and uh, it, it, obviously there's going to have to be something in, to look at in writing and read and go over. But both boards are going to have to vote and come to agreement if they want to move forward or not. Could be a situation where one votes yes and one votes no. Um, are there any other quests, John? How many more developments are involved with this? Explain. Just we have the preserve. Yeah, just the preserve. preserve. Just the preserve in us. Wildcat yes. has nothing. And just, just, you, just you two. Preserve and Stony Brook. And preserve has how many acres? I should, I, I should know. I don't know. Okay. It's very small. Yeah, I mean, it's... Quite a bit smaller than ours. Yeah. Way smaller well, than way, ours, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So the forty thousand dollar a year question, is that something we could take in house? And John is more for John. You know, like he's licensed to do lots of things and I don't think that this is just another license. Can we have staff that does that in house and we can take that away? And then that, that factors out of the equation. We could look at that. I mean, it would be increasing the staff and seeing what permitting is required and nice. and what the you know the the cost would be. So, as the golf pro, are you willing to give up more of John's time allocated away from that golf course? <laughs> well, so yeah. Be careful what you yeah. wish for. Yeah. What you wish for, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's a different situation. I mean, because of what it is, you can't just go in there with equipment and start. Right. Know. Yeah. Um, it's a lot more. Tedious and strenuous to go in there. You got to, you know, because you got to keep everything in a natural state. But I'm, I'm looking into it right now. I'm, okay. Uh, how the licenses fall? Can if I get my license like I do here with the golf course, you know, I can have so many people under that license spraying. And I'm, I'm currently looking into that right now since yesterday. See, it's yeah. not like you're doing a weekly. No. It's, no. Uh, you get right. Twice a year. How often do they come, Lloyd? Twice a year. Pardon? How often do they clean the preserve? Once or twice a year. I want to say it's like three times a year. Okay. They go through there. Okay. They inspect it. They inspect it. To see what's in there, what has to go. Okay. I didn't quite understand what John was raising. Could you repeat that? John, John was saying that rather than um, having the outside contractors, you brought this up at the last uh, board meeting with HOA and CDD about you know, the uh, CDD taking over the maintenance of the preserves. You actually raised that question. Yeah. Would that be in lieu of the, if, if this had a past, would that be in lieu of the village? Yeah. Or if we if, kept it? If we kept it. Okay. Thank you. Um, I think you guys are, uh, do you have any other comments for us? I know we had a lot of questions, and that was really where we wanted to go with this to see what you know, what the community and what came up at the uh, CDD HOA workshop last week. Um, I will, <clears throat> as questions come into to Chris, um, they'll go to Chuck and and to you if there's other questions that come up. And this is something that the HOA and the CDD and together we really need to look into and and look at all our avenues. But we may need to contact you with other questions. That's um, fine. That's fine. Again, this is not a, uh, we're not at a fever pace. This is not okay. a high priority. Uh, it is uh, a, a topic of interest within the village. Okay. Um, and we're working with both associations. We've been doing that collectively. Um, we can proceed however you wish. Okay, and they're kind of in the, the preserves kind of in the same boat as us, not sure how they want to handle it at this point. Well, I think that they, um, it, it, uh, they have indicated that they are supportive. Okay. But I don't want to speak for no, them because they fine. have not had you know, a problem. I won't hold you to the, no. your feet to yeah. the fire on that one. I, I get it. Yeah. So. I appreciate you guys coming and talking yeah. to us because oh, there's me, a lot of misinformation that's been pumped out there, you know. This so. is really simple. This yeah, is really simple. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm just saying, you know how it is. Yep. Yeah, I mean, there's been a lot of rumors floating, and that's why we had the two boards together last week. Rich, you have one more question? Yeah, some of the folks have reached out to me, and I have a concern as well. Uh, where exactly would we put a parking lot? Would it increase our traffic? Strategically, where would this parking lot be? 
I'm not even sure where the road would come in. I, I don't either, and that's what a lot of the folks are grabbing me on. What about this parking lot? Where it's can they be? There. Okay. And will it impact our traffic? Jim, you have a pick. Where do you think that that... That would come in down by the... Uh, Firehouse, wouldn't it? Yeah. Because there's a lane that runs all the way down. All the way down there. So exactly. it really would not affect <clears throat> traffic coming in our back gate. No. But no. if the, at your meeting with the, what they're doing with Corkscrew, when they're talking about having our back gate go out further along that firehouse road out to Corkscrew, that could impact it too, because that would bring more traffic that way. So, you know, I, I guess. Personally, I don't see any benefit of using that back road. No I think, right. Us. It's no benefit to us. They just want to take the traffic off a of corkscrew. Yeah. So, so it would come down further and then cut. That's what that meeting I had with uh, Wilson. Mm -hmm. He talked about <coughs> wanting the county to change it. They were going to have the sidewalk right up against the road. And I guess the village would like to see a green path between the, the road and the sidewalk. And he said what they were going to do is fill in our ditch and put a culvert in there and then direct the water across the road, under the road, mm -hmm. to the other side. And then he mentioned about, you know, down the roadways, talking about putting a stoplight down in down there closing off our back entrance. They said it would help with our traffic to that gate, but it won't because they still got to come in off that road and get into Pine Pinewoods. School, so we'd still be blocked with them. Well, the, 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 with regard to the Corkscrew Road project, um, the county has come up with their preliminary design and what David mentioned to you are some elements of those that design that we don't think is up to the standard that we'd like to see throughout Estero. So what we're doing is on the rebuilding of Estero Parkway, we're trying to um, increase the level of landscaping and the you know the the user usability of some of those pathways and whatnot to be to be more like um, what you see going through the brooks rather than the typical right. county standard. Well, you've got it down here. Yeah. So on our entrance, you've got that green space between the roads. Right, and right. And, and I got no problem with that. So we're still going to be work, trying to work with the county to upgrade their plan, and it would probably be at our cost, um, the village's cost. And as, if that is allowed, we would come back to you and talk about how we would propose to do all of these corkscrew in that manner. Uh, so, do you want to continue your meeting? Uh, the, then what is confirmed? Um, that's, I wish we were a little further along with that, Lloyd, but it's, it's going to be something over the next three to six months that's going to develop, and you'll be aware of that. If we need, um, if we need property, we talk to you. If we need, you know, if we need to fill in the ditch, change the stormwater issues, we talk to you about it. Right, because the, um, I mean, the uh, CDD will is ultimately be going to be doing the landscaping there. So um, we'd like to be a part of what you're doing, so we know just how much property and and what we're talking about. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. You thank you. Yep. Thank you very much. Have a very merry Christmas. Thank you. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. John, John, are you finished? Yeah. John was finished. All right. So we're going to go on to um, Jeff. Okay. Um, so. Uh, Stony Brook Day was a success. We did 106 people from Stony Brook came out and played golf on us on November, November was it 22nd? 23rd. 23rd. Um, gave away some uh, 
All the barbecue sandwiches we had, we wound up giving away a few hot dogs because we ran out of barbecue sandwiches. <laughs> uh, we had a good time. Everybody seemed to enjoy it. Um, December is starting out really good. We have uh, first eight days. We're ahead of plan by $7,800. Um, we have had great weather so far. We had a couple rain days in November. It pushed us a little bit behind plan, so we're hoping to make that up in December. So we'll come through the first quarter right at plan or a little above. Great. I know we'll slow down a little bit next week, and then we'll pick up after the 26th, and the 26th to the 31st will be a mad dash. Lots of folks playing golf. Um, and we are closed Christmas Day. We are closed Christmas Day. And I know lots of people might sneak out and play a little golf. <laughs> Just don't break anything, okay? I know you won't. No. But some people have carts and they go out and they get clubs, they want to go try them. Yeah. So. Not me. <laughs> Just don't break anything. Um, junior program's going well. Uh, things are going great there. We're looking to have some Christmas camps. We got kids out of school for Christmas. I know folks that are out there that watch this on TV. You want to bring your kids for the Christmas camps. We'll have those uh, the two days after Christmas and the week the week the week after. We'll have a full week. Um, other than that, not a lot going on per se. Uh, things are going pretty good. We did get an improvement to our G1 system. Uh, when you're on the golf course now, if you have the app, you can go on and order. Uh, hot dog, beer, soda, and they'll directly deliver it to you. The eventuality is once they once they work out some kinks, that if you're a resident or you, know, uh, you could pay for your round at your home before you leave the house. So you go directly to the cart onto the golf course. So a little bit more convenient, you don't have to get in a line if there is one. You don't even have to come in the golf shop unless you want to say hi. And um, you go directly to the tee. So that's not Ready yet? They're working out some kinks, but the first part of it is this new food and beverage order, and it'll throw up a flag to what hole you're on, and uh, the cart girl will come to you, or we'll have the we'll have it on where you can pick it up at the turn. Good. Um, and that's about all we got going. The pro on. shop, sales. Pro shop, yeah, we had a, we had another good month in sales. We sold 106.